guys, welcome back. It's your girl Toya T, and this is my recap and review of Be Mary Jane Season 4, Episode 5, Getting Served. So we catch up really with uh, Mary Jane and PJ, uh, and their storyline is pretty, sh it's pretty brief. Uh, for Mary Jane and PJ, we see them, they're at a local, I guess, barbecue spot, and they're talking about how it doesn't quite match up to their father's uh, ribs and his special sauce, and then they're surprised that in New York City, with all of these different restaurants and people, that they can't get proper ribs. In New York City, it's like, hello, like... It's only so much you can do when you're uh, in in New York, uh, but uh, so they're they're talking about this, and eventually they try to go and replicate it themselves in Mary Jane's non kitchen at having hotel room that's a thousand dollars a night, which is funny, but uh, they end up buying like a like a steamer or I think a deep fryer. Um, so they could uh, make these ribs and uh, cook it somehow <laughs> on her terrace and uh, it's just so ridiculous but that's pretty much their whole storyline they're missing Atlanta um, PJ suggests that it, that you know Mary Jane go home on the weekends or go home this weekend if she's missing Atlanta and the food and family so much but she tells them that she's on call so she can't really leave because anytime that a story pops up they could call her in to go cover it so she's pretty much stuck PJ has no desire to go back home uh, anytime soon if it's not holidays because he said I, I was the dude you know twirling the sign when I was in Atlanta and I feel like since I've left it I've, I've uh, grown as a person as a man and and, and uh, you know financially and career wise he really has grown since he's left so he's like I'm not going anywhere uh, plus, he also uh, is still working with that client, so it wasn't his boss, it's his client, the really rich client that's been really trying to help him out, the one that bought him the Rolex, and I did mention last recap that his client did ask him to look out for her daughter for her while she's away at business, I think she's, um, I think she's overseas, and so her daughter's college age, and so, uh, PJ is telling Mary Jane about it and saying, like, you know, she's making me watch her daughter, you know, she's done a lot of stuff for me, so I'm really trying to help her out. And the daughter says that she's interested in journalism. Is it possible that you can get her an internship at the network that you work at? And Mary Jane at first, him and Haas, but then she said, okay, fine, you know, I really do want to help you out. And this woman really does seem to have your back, so I can at least uh, put a good word in for her or recommend her for the internship program. Because apparently it's very uh, prestigious and they usually have like long applications for lots of applications they usually have lots of applications for it so we have that um so let me switch over to Nisi who's pretty much the star of this episode we catch up with Nisi we see her at the club with her girls they're all this the single mamas the single mamas club I think the single isn't that a movie that's a that's a Tyler Perry movie whatever it was a bad movie uh so the single moms club and they're up in the VIP section. Nisi's paying because she has her $150,000 settlement. And they're popping bottles. And she's telling them, like, you know, we're all good moms. Y'all need a break. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm treating you guys because I feel like, you know, I can. And I just want to show you guys I appreciate you. And we need to go out. So they're at the club. And, of course, you get some thirsty-ass thoughts because that's what they were. Come up to the VIP section, like, oh, I see you guys popping bottles. You look like you're having fun. Can we sit in here? And she's like, no. Uh, which, what I would have said too, like, girls, we don't know you. I mean, it's one thing if you are trying to mooch off of a, so a group of guys you know, in a, in a VIP section and, you know, maybe flirt your way in and, you know, drink all your liquor and leave. But these are a whole bunch of girls and you're coming in there like, oh, I see you having fun. Let me, can we come in here and drink, you know, off the, the stuff that you paying for and not ship anything in? Oh, hells no. So Nisi tells them, no, it's a private party. We're all set. And the leader of the Thought Gang was like, well, I know who you are. You're the chick from the, you know, the police, um, the police incident and she's like you know just because you think that you got some money don't mean that you better than us you i heard that you were a single mother of two kids with two baby daddies and it was just like she was just throwing so much shade at nisi and nisi was trying to brush it off like you know what it's cool whatever just go away like you're the ones trying to get into my vip um and you want to call me all kinds of names get out of here and of course queen thought didn't take that lightly she tried to swing and it's funny because this girl's wearing like a full-on like cat print pant like cheetah uh cat suit 
with a big belt and a and a and a uh, oh, obvious wig because she swings at Nisi. Nisi gets her into a headlock and starts punching her and pulls her wig off. And the girl try to pull out a Kim Bella line like, "I'm still cute though. I'm cuter than you, even without my wig. My wig costs more than your life." And I'm like, "Girl, if your wig costs more than her life, then you can pay for your own VIP." So that just looks ridiculous. But Nisi gets kicked out of the club, even though she got VIP. And of course, we're in this in this type of society where everyone has their phones out and everyone's recording her. And because it was a big story in Atlanta. Everyone knows who she is, so they're tagging her and saying like, oh, that's the chick from the, you know, the police brutality um, incident that sued the city. And so it, it goes viral and everyone sees it uh, and it especially becomes a problem uh, for her family because uh, their grandmother, the grandmother's trying to get Nisi's little sister, Deja, into what is really Jack and Jill, but I guess they couldn't use <laughs> they couldn't use the foundation's real name, so they called it Jack and Jane. I, I feel like it would been better if they just called it John and Jane, just so that well, I guess they didn't want to make it too um, you know, far from the original foundation. But it's a you know, it's a Jack and Jill is a foundation for um, middle class and you know, socially mobile families, black families to assimilate into uh, white circles and eventually turned into something where they're uh, continuing to teach their, their kids who are now in these you know very white spaces they probably go to private schools they probably go to some of these uh, predominantly white um, school districts and live in predominantly white areas and so they use the foundation the uh, as a way to teach you know african-american culture or black culture to these children so they don't lose that aspect it gives them a chance to network with other black kids with similar economic backgrounds and with parents who have like similar desires for their children to move up and to elevate and to get culturally enriched um and so uh, the grandmother is trying to get Deja in and she has Deja and Deja is like, oh, okay. You know, she's meeting the little girls and they're like, aren't you, I know, we know who your sister is. Your sister's the one from the, from the police brutality thingy. And they're like, your niece, your niece's uh, um, sister. And she's like, yeah. And you can see it's a problem because the grandmother goes and talks to the leader of uh, Jack and Jack and Jane. <laughs> Jack and Jane, Chuck, Jack and Jack and Jane. That's what it is. Jack and Jane. And the lady's like, well, I don't know if I can endorse this because endorse your granddaughter for membership uh, to Jack and Jane because of, you know, what's currently happening with your family and the scandal. And the grandmother's like, I have no idea what you're talking about. And the woman gets a, a younger member or her daughter or someone to come and, sh and bring her phone and show her what's on Twitter, which is, you know, videos of Nisi like yelling at the security guards and yelling at the thought queen and saying like I'll beat your ass up and that's why you know like I'm so much better than you and you jealous and da 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 and like they show her and it's like you know uh it has like the lines of like outrage uh you know black mother gone gone wild or something like that and so um the grandmother's just like oh my gosh I just didn't know and then and that ends that and so uh we go to see Nisi and she's seeing all the stuff on Twitter social media is the devil really <laughs> I'm on social media right now but it's I mean like in those kind of situations she's getting all these tweets from like racist white people and other like judgmental people in general that are saying that she's a bad mother that this is you know another um the racist ones are like another monkey you know fighting in a cage or something like that and you know other people were saying oh, we can see why she got pinned why she got why the police officer uh um took her down and and you know all that stuff and so Nisi fires back and she gets mad and she's like well all y'all you know too worried about what's going on for the racist ones like you can leave me alone leave, stay out of my business and then she said for those who want to say stuff about me I'm the one with the hundred fifty thousand dollar settlement and so you can you can you can kiss my my whole entire big fat ass and so actually the Twitter rant that she went on came back to bite her in the ass because this is why it's called getting the episode's called getting served she gets served papers from the city of atlanta they're saying we saw the video we saw your tweets and so uh you're in a breach of contract you need to give us the money back her family finds out about it as she tells them about getting served the papers and they're like what happened there and they're like you know you're not supposed to talk about the case she talks to her lawyer and her lawyer pretty much says that the court case is a formality and and that it's very cut, cut and clear 
you did break um, the the settlement agreement, so you got to get the money back. The family is like, well, you know, you put the money in a trust, so you pretty much, and you, you know, bought yourself some new clothes, the kids some new clothes, and you got your hair done, so it couldn't be that much money um, that you have, uh, that you uh, have to cover from the settlement to get back to them. And this is when she has to tell them that she bought Dante, a hun the, da Dante that new car, and then that's when the shit hits the fan with the family. They're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you did this, Nisi and the father uh, her father Paul is just so pissed off he's like you know what let's go like you he's like I don't care let's go we're going to Dante's house we're getting that car back she goes to Dante's house and she's been all this time uh, during this whole like club incident and getting served and all in between has been trying to contact Dante and she can barely get him to call her back uh, and that's crazy because of the fact that she bought him a car so they can spend more time together but they've been doing it in secret because her family hates him because he's a fuck boy. And so when she gets to the house, of course he's not there. She comes, when she's coming back down the driveway, we see the car pull up. And who's in it but Dante's other baby mama, the one that he got pregnant at the same time that he got Nisi pregnant. So they both have kids at the same age. And Nisi comes attacking her like, bitch, what you doing in my car? And she's like, what do you mean your car? And Nisi tells her, she's telling her, I'm the one that paid for that car. I bought it for Dante, so you need to get out. And uh, we see that during this time in the driveway that they figured out that Dante has been, been playing both of them. And so they both decide that they're done with Dante. They actually squash their beef because they've had a beef for a long time. Like, you did crazy ass baby mama that's taking Dante from me. And you did crazy ass baby mama that's taking Dante from me. And now they see Dante is the common denominator. He is the problem. He's the one pitting them against each other so that he can have some loving from both of them and impreg both of, impregnate both of them. And they both realize that they are single mothers with children with him and that he's never around. He doesn't help. He's a bum. And so they decide to squash it, squash their beef. Nisi actually opens up to, uh, I think her name is Anika, uh, and says, you know, our kids are siblings, so we should actually make sure that they see each other they have play dates and that we support each other because we know Dante ain't gonna do shit. And so Nisi gets the car back. She goes back to the house. She's been calling um, Mary Jane. Mary Jane's been kind of trying to avoid and stay out of the mess. And so uh, she finally does get Mary Jane on the phone and she's crying to her. She's like, you know, I feel like so stupid for what's happened. And I feel like, you know, everyone's like, I just, I just, uh, I'm so ashamed of myself. And Mary Jane lets her know, like, you're not the first woman or the last woman to do something stupid in the name of love and you know she's talking about herself because Mary Jane's a dumbass in love so and so she's like you know put your head up just you know take care of your beautiful intelligent children and move on from there so Nisi gets kind of emboldened by this talk with Mary Jane and she decides to cut off Dante so he calls her up and he's like oh can you come outside the dude came over to her house on the bike because he didn't realize that the car was gone he, he rode his bike over to her house and if anybody's ever lived in Atlanta you know that there's one no sidewalks <laughs> and two public transportation is like non-existent like it doesn't work it doesn't it works but it doesn't run that often and so the fact I don't I don't know how close he could possibly live to where Nisi and her grandparents live and so he must have <laughs> he must have rode his bike for over several miles through the bush in the in the highway because again there's really no there's no sidewalks except for like downtown so I thought that was funny but he's like you know what's going on you took the car back and she's like I had to and you know I'm done with you and he's trying to say he's like I saw your baby mama was the other baby mama was in the car and he's like oh she knows she's crazy and he's like no I'm done with you don't call me for sex don't call me to talk don't call me for money don't call me for nothing unless it has to do with our daughter and I said yes yes applaud 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 Nisi but I think sadly this is probably the last time we'll see Nisi because it is uh, also going back to this Jack and Jane um, issue and so the grandmother had gotten a call from the leader saying that they weren't going to uh, endorse uh, Deja for membership to Jack and Jane and the grandmother's upset like why not and she's like well you know the lady's like uh, the father is we know about his drug problems and issues and now the sister has this this scandal and so what if what if Deja turns into one of them and it's just so crazy and hypocritical because the whole point of this organization is to 
uplift members of the black community to make these to to give these children and these families a place where they can connect they can support each other they can uh teach each other and uh enrich the culture enrich their children with different parts of black culture and black community and it's just so crazy to judge this young lady on the actions of her father and her sister and not necessarily on herself especially since she has another older sister that has her stuff together as the pharmacist the the other the niece's oldest uh older sister so there's an older sister that's doing well so it's like hello this child is very intelligent but whatever a grandmother gets mad the grandfather tells her you know what you got to do like no matter even though Nisi's uh, delivery was you know messed up at least people know what she's what she uh, has to say and what's on her mind and she has it out there and so she's telling the he's telling his wife you know I've seen you smile in front of these people's faces and knowing that they they've not supported us during this this uh, tough time in our family's uh, life and so the grandmother goes back to the Jack and Jane um one of their events and she tells off the whole group like you know i thought this was supposed to be about community and none of y'all called me when my family was going through all this stuff and if it was about scandal then what about this chick right here and this other woman right here and the you know all the all the other women who are hearing this are like you know one of them is like my family's going bankrupt and because we kept building you know digging out our children and uh from out of trouble and so we have no money left and so i guess you might want to kick me out and then another lady's like i'm leaving my husband because we've really pretty much just been married in name only for six years and it's about time so maybe you want to kick me out and it's like we all have our family issues but the whole point is for us to uplift each other and support each other and so we find out that deja does get in uh the grandma did plot applaud get her in there but that's that okay ending off with mary jane and pj <laughs> so uh pj does uh hold up his end of the bargain for his client uh, mary jane does help the girl get an internship and pj is really happy and thanks mary jane for helping him out and then we find out that the girl has sticky fingers she's one of those like rich entitled kids that think they can take anything they want to the girl apparently took a bottle of um alcohol from the main anchor's office and tried to get pj to go over to the house with her and drink and he was like no so it's good to see that he is not going to get involved with this young girl but it does show that she is going to be a problem for him so that is one thing uh to celebrate just being the family getting the stuff resolved them not getting involved in drama in atlanta and the family down there resolving their own issues um they actually pj has the father uh overnight his ribs with his special sauce he won he gets the hotel to warm it up and him and uh him and mary jane actually sit down and eat the ribs and kind of just bond over you know staying out of the family drama and having this new life in new york and so that is pretty much how it ends oh and if you're looking for lee lee apparently is on tour on a comedy tour so he's not there but i guess that's fine because we didn't really see mary jane anyway and she seemed to be i don't know i don't know what's going on we still haven't talked about this almost turning 40 years old things so and maybe that'll be next episode but i thought the episode itself was just kind of eh. um i'm happy that nisi has gotten her stuff together but i just really wasn't interested in that storyline i saw where it was going i saw that she was going to you know you know tell him boy bye and get the hell out of here and then she I, I didn't see her having to get back the money but that's gone too so I guess she's back at square one or square zero, but seems like she has more confidence in herself to move forward. But anyway, let me know what you guys think about this episode. Did you like it? Did you not like it? Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe and come back next week when I do episode six. We're almost, we're almost getting there, guys. So anyway, see you later. Bye.